Ever. Monday, April 11th, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First on the agenda this evening is the open session minutes from March 21st, as written. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving quickly into communication and announcements, we have a retirement recognition. Is he here? I thought I saw him earlier. Is he here? I did see him. We'll find him. Jerry. Come on in, Jerry Brown. Yes, it's good. I noticed that today. <laughs> Well, well, Madam Chairman, as, every, as everybody knows, uh, Jerry Brown has been our uh, billing inspector for a decade, a little more than a decade. Uh, it's been a great pleasure working with Mr. Brown. I've had the opportunity to do that over the last four and a half years or so. We very much appreciate his work in the community. He's, he's, he's kept the bu building community moving forward, quite frankly, um, which can be a complicated task with your role. So I, I want to say on behalf of um, my staff, uh, we very much appreciate the effort you've made here over the last decade. Good deal, Andrew. Thank you. I concur, and you will be very much missed, I think, in the community. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> not yet. We're working on it. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm the acting consultant. <laughs> nice. We've got more coming. And more coming, yeah. A lot more coming. Thank you. And I served with Jerry for five years on the zoning board, and he was always there as a the voice of reason. Yeah. and. Very, very always supportive of the uh, of the Home applicants. Order. Yep. So thank you for that. The customers, that's how we call them. Mm, right, owner. exactly. That's well, great. on behalf of the town of North Andover, we wanted to um, give you a certificate of appreciation this evening for over 10 years of dedicated service to the town as the inspector of buildings. Your professionalism, dedication, and integrity have been a credit to yourself, the community, economic development department, and the entire town of North Andover. We want to thank you on behalf of the town of North Andover and wish you the absolute best in your retirement, Jerry. All right. No, Jerry, he's also a rescue skier. Yes. And when someone is hurt at the top of the mountain, he's one of the few who goes, goes up there and rescues them. And That's why the Olympics, World Cups, and the I, work Olympics. At, I work at Loom. So. It's been a great pleasure to work for the town of North Andover. There's some really nice people here. So thank you so much for doing this time for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll let him keep the jacket raised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, we should grab that. Yeah. I, didn't know, I didn't know if we had to declare it. Is that your side? I wasn't sure if you were. We may have to take a vote later. Yeah, I wasn't sure later. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> All right. Some of the, um, sorry, anyway, some of the better things that we do um, are being able to recognize people when they've done a great job for the town of North Andover as they leave. Um, but on the flip side of that, we are also swearing in a new employee this evening. Um, so Chief and, and um, Officer Enright, if you'd like to come up. I'd like to introduce Officer William Enright. Uh, Will, he uh, came on to us uh, a while ago as a reserve officer. He did very well there, then we had uh, the uh, time to go to the academy. So in the six months he was in the academy, I, every week I uh, heard from the director of the academy how well he was doing. But at the uh, ceremony uh, that evening, uh, that, that morning, I'm sorry, at the graduation, it was brought to my attention that he was uh, one of the highest academic for the academy. So I'm very, very impressed. And he, uh, he, in the last couple of weeks, he's been on the uh, force at, in the midnight shift. But he's, he's done field training. He's out there on his own. He's, he's made some great, great investigations. And uh, I can't uh, say enough about how Will has really acclimated to the department. And, uh, the town. So, Will, congratulations. And Will's mom's going to pin this badge on him. Okay. 
That's part of it, right? You've got to make them all official and shiny. That's right. This will make you official, and this is the best part of my job to welcome you as a fellow employee. And could not be working with a better department or in a better town. So. Thank you. And I look forward as a resident to see you socially, but not. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind raising your right hand and repeat after me, I uh, state your name. William Enright. Solemnly promise. Solemnly promise. And affirm. And affirm. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Honestly. Honestly. Sincerely. Sincerely. And impartially. And impartially. Perform all the duties. Perform all the duties. That are incumbent. That are incumbent. Upon me. Upon me. As a police officer. As a police officer. For the town of North Andover. For the town of North Andover. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Go have your cake now. And yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your cake. And Thank you, guys. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. Madam, next, uh, next up is uh, we've recently hired a new uh, director of public health to replace Sue Soria, and Mr. Lagrasse is here. We're very, very pleased that uh, we're fortunate enough to get a lot of solid candidates, uh, none uh, more uh, experienced and skilled than Mr. Lagrasse. So we'd like to introduce Brian Lagrasse. Welcome aboard, Brian. Welcome Thank you. Aboard. Thank Welcome you very back. much. It is uh, fantastic yes. to be here. I see some uh, familiar faces and some new faces, so it's good to be back, and I really look forward to getting started. What is this? Next week. Next, oh, next yep. week? Okay. Tuesday. Yep. Monday's a holiday. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations and welcome great. aboard. Thank you. I really do look forward to working with all of you. That's great. Very great. excited. That's great. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Thank you. See you Tuesday. Bye. Congratulations. Bye. Bye. Enjoy your long weekend. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to put you right to work. Exactly. That's my Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get that off. I don't get it. Off. He's a salaried employee. All right, then moving on to our uh, job posting and vacancy log. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? We're not looking nope. for anybody in the trees, so that's good. We got that one done. Um, all jobs, just so for the folks at home and the folks in the room, any of the jobs that are posted in North Denver can also be found on our website. And. Two have been, well, one has been filled. Okay. Moving on to, which we'd like to see each year, is our Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Yes, uh, let me first comment on the fact that, you know, Lynn Savage uh, is typically the point person on this for both this and the Budget Award. Uh, we've, uh, Lynn, she, she, she. Oh, Lynn, come on in. I'm sorry, Lynn, I didn't know you were out there, sorry. <laughs> Good segue to Lynn Savage. Yes. Hi. Okay. Thank you for having me. 
I'm here to um, pr present the second quarter financial reports. Um, so we can interrupt you one sec. So yep. what Lynn missed in the hallway was us uh, giving her the proper accolades for the work she does on the GFOA award. Um, next on the agenda is an update of the, of the second quarter report. But uh, right. Lynn works uh, over the last couple of years, I think uh, the board has seen, mm -hmm. um, tirelessly to make sure that we not only are recognized for our budget product, which is uh, for those residents who take the opportunity and business owners take the opportunity to read it, it's more just more than just a financial document. It's a communication tool. It really is a policy document as well. Uh, this particular award goes uh, to what we call the CAFRA. It's basically we have transformed our audited financials, which are posted going back about two decades on our website as well, um, and transformed those into a document that really provides additional financial information uh, that the residents would find uh, important and relevant in terms of understanding how their community operates. So we have been recognized by the GFOA for the four years, fourth uh, consecutive year for meeting um, the standard of excellence that, that they set nationally. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. You're welcome. Um, so I'm here to report on the second quarter financials. Um, it's a, as you know, we've been going through the transition of the, the financial software, so I apologize that it's a little late. It will be on schedule now that we're the conversion has gone through and it was very successful as far as the general ledger goes and we're working on the payroll. That conversion started and went live middle of February. A little bit of hiccups but we're working those out and just to further update, uh, the tax billing will go live on July 1st. Mm. So the next tax bill should be coming out of the new uh, general ledger system. So right. everybody should be prepared to see that. It's been a lot of work for all, all the, you know, the treasurer collectors department and mm -hmm. the assessors and, and such. So it's, it, it's pretty gratifying once it's finished <laughs> and with no issues. So um, to get on to the uh, second quarter financials, um, again, in this package, I've added back in the fund balance reports and the capital project reports for everybody so that you have them where the first quarter we didn't have them. So just to, to update you on the revenues, um, property tax revenues are collected at 48.8% for this time in the year for the, through December 31st compared to last year, which was 48.2. So we're right on target. Collections are good in that area. Uh, motor vehicle excise, again, um, second quarter is running at 21.4%, which is up 9.1% over last year. Motor vehicle, you know, is a good indication of where the economy has gone. People are buying new cars, excise is up, um, so it, it's doing great. It's uh, $333,000 over and above this time last year, so collections oh, wow. are running very well. Uh, meals tax collections are running at 56.7%, which is a little bit down from last year, but it's right on target. It was at 578 uh, ambulance collections as well at 48.7 percent um, no issues there it's you know it goes up and down it's right on target though then we get to the building inspections uh, which collections are at 156 <laughs> percent it's amazing <laughs> it's a big number um, but of course there are some anomalies there we have that large project that's out on you know the 196 units on Berry Street which is really increasing those building permits, which is the building uh, inspection, electrical and gas. You take that factor that out of the collections and we're at 66.3%. So it, it's still up. It's, it's very up. good. Yep, yep, it's very good. Uh, interest income is, you know, running pretty much on target. It's not expected to be a huge increase. Probably just level from the last year because as you know, interest rates haven't gone up any. <laughs> They're pretty staying level. Um, so then you take the whole of local receipts and you back out motor vehicle excise because that's one of the biggest pieces within the local receipts. We're at 67.76% collected, so we're, we're doing very well um, through December. Um, and I expect that when I come back here with the third quarter report, um, it will still be running very well based on what I've been looking at. So overall, you know, I don't see any issues with the revenue collections as well. You know, there's some collections that aren't, have zero balances, but those are ones that are collected at specific times during the year, which is like the housing authority. And then we have the um, burn permits and things like that. So that's why the, if you see a couple that don't have any collections, that's why. Um, all expenses uh, for the general fund are running about approximately 50%, which is expected this time of the year. I see no issues. We've had a great winter. <laughs> So snow, we have no main issues with snow and ice deficits. So um, I don't really have any areas of concern to report on at that on that at this time. 
Um, so looking on to the enterprise funds, uh, water revenue collections are at 60% of budget. Expenditures are running at 46.6%. Now, that's normal for this, you know, for that type of business because some of the work gets done in the spring, so the big expenditures will be coming up through, but I don't foresee anything, any issues there with the water um, enterprise fund. Sewer enterprise is the same. It's 56.7% on revenue collections and 42.2% on expenditures. Um, and, of course, on the water and sewer revenues, they are a little higher because, again, in reference to the building permits of the Berry Street, is generated hookup fees, which has increased the revenue for this time of year. So it's, it's an anomaly. We wouldn't expect that we're going to see it as a continuing thing at this time of year, end of December, that we're almost over 50% collected. Um, well, moving on to the Stevens Estate, which is, um, again, very good news. Stevens, Stevens Estate profitability has been continuing now, and it's been improving for the last four years, and it keeps going up. So collections right now are at 82.2 percent collected. Um, and knowing that the estate is pretty well booked for the season, it's going to be a tremendous year for them. I was um, up there a few days ago, and they are, they're really booked up. Yeah. Not yep. totally, but yep. it's, um, it's fantastic. It's good news that it's, yeah. it's finally becoming profitable, and we don't have to be concerned with having to subsidize it with the general fund. Yeah, it's great. Um, and, and as I said, they are booked up pretty much for the calendar for this fiscal year and, you know, all of the, through the summer and fall of next year. Not during year, the yeah. week so much, but for Saturday. Right, the yeah. weekends, which is a typical yeah. for, the, for that. So, um, so that's what all I have to report. Does anybody have any questions? I have no, other, you know, no main areas of concern. Everything seems to be running very well. Great. Um, no, it's good. Yep. Okay. Congratulations. On your work. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. That it is. All right. Probably a good time to comment on the communication that the Finance Committee completed their work, uh, all of their votes, and prepared and completed their um, letter, transmittal letter for the uh, warrant. I'll be forwarding that to the board, and we're moving through last review to head on to the printer for the town meeting warrant. Okay, good. Um, an update on the National Grid underground surcharge. Uh, just very briefly in review, back in 1999 and 2001, annual town meeting voted to adopt a statute that allowed uh, undergrounding the utility in two areas of town. In 2002, we started the project in the old center area. Mm -hmm. uh, the statute allowed the two primary utilities, uh, Verizon for telephone and National Grid for electricity, to um, uh, impose a 2% surcharge on all invoice, on all billing for North Andover residences and businesses in order to recoup uh, their expenses. Um, those surcharges started in 2003 for National Grid and 2004 for Verizon. Um, last week we received notice from National Grid that they have fully recouped all of their expenditures. So a letter was sent to National Grid asking them to uh, cease immediately to impose the 2% surcharge on North Andover uh, electric bills. Uh, by our calculations, uh, Verizon, which has a much lower um, a revenue in town than National Grid, uh, will need probably about three and a half or four more years to recoup their expenditures. So they'll continue the surcharge. So they'll continue yes. the surcharge. Okay. So, the, so Tom Meeting at the same time approved the same method of funding for undergrounding uh, the lights, excuse me, the wires, um, and ultimately installing lights in the on the Main Street corridor. So at some point, the board will need a conversation about whether or not uh, you want to proceed in that direction. At this point, since there's been no uh, serious conversation about that, design work, uh, we've, we've asked a couple times for cost estimates without it getting a su sufficient amount of uh, detail. It didn't make sense to have the surcharge continue to come out of residence bills while we contemplated that. Uh, it just made more sense to stop that, give the ratepayer a break, and then uh, the board can decide moving forward whether or not you, you want to uh, proceed with undergrounding of the Main Street corridor. But that's a subject for another day. But, but didn't you also said that the possibility wouldn't, would be to put it behind the building? Now, you've introduced that. We have not explored that, and we haven't received information which confirms that the utility would be able to do that. Okay. 
Yep. The, the article at the time, or the authorization by Tommy at the time, was undergrounding what happened at the Common and, and also the Main Street Corridor. Um, but at this point, since there's no immediate plan to do that, it didn't make sense to continue to surcharge the residents for the 2%. Okay. Okay, thank you. 2016 summer band concert and children's shows. <coughs> Rick Coleman. Thank you. As part of myself coming before the board every year in terms of Stevens Pond, the board has always wanted an update on the children's shows and the summer concerts and the commons. So uh, we have our schedule. Uh, you have it in your package. Uh, we'll have a full schedule on Tuesday and Thursday after, uh, Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock on the common. The children's shows will go on. And we have the Sunday nights after July 4th up until uh, the week before Labor Day, we'll be having Sunday night concerts. Uh, we have brought back some of the standards that uh, Bill McAvoy has had for many years before we took this over, and, and we have tried to include new acts both on the children's shows and the, um, the concerts on the common. We've also tried to include some of our own town uh, performers, people that live in town that actually are involved with bands or children's shows, so we've been actually able to include that also. Uh, the, the events are paid for by a combination of our Sunday night brook skating, um, revenue from that, as well as our drive to the businesses, which have been very supportive. Uh, going back to long before, you know, when Bill was actually running the program. So we hope once again that we'll be able to put this on at, uh, at really, um, uh, it will be able to, through both funding sources, to pay for all of the events here. So we're pretty excited about it. If you ever drive by on a Tuesday or Thursday in the mornings, you'll see how packed it is over there. The enhancements at the common from our, from our town, the DPW, has actually made it even a more aesthetically great place to, to see these events also. And then on Sunday nights, also, um, you know, a six o'clock night during the summer uh, has been great. Our, our rain site for the children's shows will once again be the Blaisdell Center at the middle school. Uh, we tend to have to use one rain date uh, during the summer. We usually luck out. Uh, there is no rain site for the Sunday night concerts. We just try to reschedule them during the week, and we'll continue to do that. So we're very pleased with the schedule we have this year, and hope you'll uh, come down and see them. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Thank Rick, you. I'm actually going to take out of order instead of jumping in the public hearing. I'm going to take out of order since you're already here, and we'll jump right to Stevie's bond. Great. Thank you. Um, so once again, uh, we come before the Board of Selectmen every year uh, to basically give you an update of where we are with the pond, uh, and then we need to set the fees so we can actually start selling the permits uh, along with our summer programs at the Youth Center. Uh, you'll notice that you know we continue to do a, n a lot of nice work down at Stevens Pond. Uh, I'm ecstatic that last summer was the first summer ever that we were not closed even for an hour. Um, our E. coli situation, which affects all ponds during the summer, usually closes the pond, you know, one or two days during a year. We're the only one that was not closed last year. Uh, the blue-green algae situation that we had two years ago uh, has completely resolved. Working very closely with um, DPW, uh, we've been able to manage that. Uh, that is also, also scheduled to be managed again, as well as the weed removal. Uh, we've done a number of other aesthetic things, too. We've worked with the trustees of the res reservation to allow a, a passage through the pond now. We actually moved the fencing back so people could actually come down from the hill to get to Wire Hill. Uh, that's been a nice addition to it as well as a number of the different landscaping things we've done. It. Um, our numbers are up and I think that has a lot to do with the way it looks down there, the quality of the water we have down there. Um, and you know, I think we're going to continue to see a rise uh, with our residents. I still think you know, we've always called it a, one of the jewels of North Andover, the pond. Um, Rosemary and Don both learned to swim there. I did uh, my <laughs> So uh, the big thing is, once again, we set the fees. Um, the town manager um, has always asked that we take a look at what the fees were, keeping the fees they were as last year, or looking at any possibility of increasing fees that could maybe cut into a little bit of the deficit. If you see the numbers, our numbers are up. Um, so my, my recommendation, um, well, you're, you will have to decide on this, but if we were to keep um, the fees that they are, there is a, a slight deficit in terms of running it for the entire summer. If we were to do the slight increases, um, we could actually close that gap almost to be completely self-sufficient. So once again, it is obviously up to the Board of Selectmen to set those fees. So the estimated revenue in the last column, is that based on the 2015 fee? 15, That's correct. 2015 fee, okay. 
Madam Chair, I move that we uh, keep the uh, fees as the same as last year. I second that. I can give you my reasons. It's so important that our kids learn to swim. And this is a lot of families. This is their staycation. This is their summer entertainment. Um, and I think it needs to remain affordable for the safety of the kids and for the, it's a quality of life issue. Um, I think we're, we're close and hopefully we'll have more revenue coming in mm -hmm. and probably make that goal anyway, so. We're hoping. Yeah, as I long think. as we have good weather. Rain right. doesn't help. Exactly. Rick, do you yeah. think, is there any issues that you can foresee by keeping them the same? With you? No, I mean, I think that we've closed that gap. Um, a few years ago when I was before this board, I, I was concerned that we weren't going to be close it. And then obviously, you know, the blue-green algae situation did hurt us. I mean, people were concerned whether the water was great. Um, you know, I, I have to applaud DPW um, under Bruce Thibodeau on how we've managed that uh, and to the point where that is not an issue anymore. And just the fact that we were the only pond in, the, in this area uh, that was not closed for at least a couple hours last year is pretty amazing. So I think people are failing. We can come back. And on top of that is just, I mean, it looks a lot better. I mean, Dick, you live near it. I mean, it's it, the way the building looks now, the, the additions we've made to it. You know, I still need to, uh, I'd like to work with the town manager looking at some long range planning to replace some equipment down there as, as you know, some of the docks and stuff. But I, th I think we have a vision of what we want to do it. And I, I do believe we have a number of residents that this is their vacation. Um, you know, one thing I am concerned about is the request for financial assistance for the pond, which again, nobody's ever turned away and not mm -hmm. to be able to. Um, um, we have that is up, but I don't think that fact is too much in our discussion tonight. I mean, the fact that we can take care of our, our residents that can't afford it. Uh, we have the senior citizens um, discount, which a few people take care of, um, to take advantage of. And, you know, overall, you know, as long as we can continue to provide that service, I, I, I think this is a great off thing that we offer in town. Last year, I recommended that you had closed two weeks before. Day. Correct. Give me any thought to that. Yeah, we actually stayed open another week. We had talked about trying to do that. Um, the, the problem that continues, and this shouldn't be the only reason why we do this, is y your lifeguards are all college kids that need to be back before Labor Day. Uh, so I think we made a compromise. We actually stayed open a week later. We are closed before before Labor Day. Um, you know, it's something we still can revisit. Uh, you know on call for lifeguards for that last week or something we could take a look at but overall I think the additional staying open a week later than we were I think met people's needs on that concern. Yeah, okay, yeah that was great that you did that. Right. right what's, so, what's the estimated revenue if we don't raise the fee? I'm sorry. The, the estimated um, revenue would be basically, you know, if you look at 2015, we made uh, 27650 um, and our expenses was the 34. Um, our estimated revenue was based on the increases we've seen over the last couple of years, and that's why we're hoping um, with the, est remember, the estimated revenue is based on last year's fees. So if we did, if we no, did, based on I'm sorry, it's. On, on, on the proposed fee. Yeah. So um, my, my, my issue is that I think if, I don't think we have a firm number on what it would be strictly on the, on the, the 27,650, I do think that we're gonna, we, it would be if we kept the same rate, would still go up a little bit. It would not go near the 32,219 though. I mean, had we thought, have we thought about just, so the car pass, you, you've got an estimate from go at 85 instead of 75. Correct. I mean thinking about taking that up to 10, but leave the swim lessons at the current rates. I mean, really don't change the swim lessons, but. W one of the things that I have always thought is if you, for, for people that have kids that are paying for swimming lessons, the price that we charge for swimming lessons is unbelievable. Oh, yeah, and I'm not suggesting changing that either. You know, if we were looking at anything, I, I was looking at not increasing. I mean, if we had to look at increasing the the, uh, the swimming lessons a little bit, it would make up, again, that not all of our residents are taking swimming lessons either. But that one, to me, I always thought was a low number. Um, the 75 has kind of been a common number we've used for the car passes for as long as I've been managing the pond. I am optimistic that we're getting close. So I, you know, I, and maybe the town manager, you know, be a little more concerned. But when we're in that range of maybe being close to one to two thousand dollars, I mean, I'm, I'm optimistic on that. At one point, it was ten thousand dollars, and we need to make a decision of was the town going to own, you know, made that loss on that. But I when you add up the car, and if you have three children, 
it starts to get kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. I sort of wonder what the cost was back 50 years ago when it was free. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was free. <laughs> Nothing's free. In, in, in 2011, you did end up hitting the 30, 30. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Why, do you, why was it so high dose? Um, if you remember, that was a big year where, um, and I don't know financially where everybody was, but we had just had a lot of people that was that actually were publicly saying to us, we're not going to, we're not going to Salisbury Beach, we're, we're staying home, gas prices or whatever. That was the year that, and if you look at it, it's, it's the one year that we, you know, we, we had those back-to-back -back years where we were 33 and 34. But if you look at the numbers, it's pretty consistent of, of the late mid to late 20s. Right. Yes, so the car pass, you said $75. I mean, so if we went up $10, the estimate would be about $2,250. Yeah, I mean, based would, on, on the last year. That would come close to closing the gap. I mean, we would be amenable to, no? You I'm still a no. You're still a no on that, huh? I'd say keep them well, the same. Well, your motion is on the table anyway. Yeah, my, yeah, my yeah, motion is to keep them the same. Just under comment, if I, I could, could suggest, I could, if I could, I could, the you want. if I could just suggest under the, under the discussion here, if you look at the trend, and I appreciate how the information's been provided, it does tell a little bit of a story and one that I think leads toward uh, the fact that we could give it one more year. I mean, we went through uh, really, and not correcting Rick, but it really wasn't two years ago. It was close to four seasons ago when we, we collected only $4,300 because we had a problem with the water. And since that time, as people have started to return, more revenue has been collected. Mm -hmm. So we're right. getting closer because the economy is a little stronger, people are trusting the product. Um, and I think we're getting closer to what the true picture is. Uh, if next year that, that delta is still equally large, then it may tell us that this is sort of the permanent true picture. I think we're still working toward increased revenue as a function of having people return to the product. Correct. We may, not, we may need one more year of that kind of information mm -hmm. to make Thank it you. more valid. Mm -hmm. And that's just a thought. Mm -hmm. okay. Plus, I'm not sure what to do with the tradition where Rick comes in and suggests higher rates, and then we, we don't. Shut us down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> we're going shut us down within the first couple of minutes. That's pretty standard. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe next year we can look at different different <laughs> ways different approach. Of it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Rick uh, recommends going down. Yeah. The board goes up. We are also looking at offering a little bit more of some innovative programs down there to, that maybe show a little more interest. There's been a request for you know the occasional birthday parties and stuff. Yeah. And we can charge, yeah. charge a little yeah. lift of fee. We have an area that we're actually been doing those. I, I think there's some potential to make a little bit of more money on that. I agree with the town manager. I, I think we're in a really good place right now and how it's being operated. And Kelly does a great job as our director down there and kind of bringing into these environmental programs we're starting for the kids and a reading mm -hmm. program down there. I just think there's more to do than just go swim there now. And if we can kind of trust the process, uh, uh, to detail on what the town manager said, um, it would have a, a better picture on that. Um, I, I am used to us keeping it at the same price, so i not notably that it was going to change. But I do believe, I feel more comfortable that we're, we are close. Right. We are and close. And maybe, maybe as you expand on, on those other programs, you'll find more ancillary income to, to, that we can look at come next year. So um. I, I do need to speak to the town manager and our board of health, new board of health person that we have a request for baptisms there. Um, and, oh, uh, that's interesting. Though. Yeah, it is. And we've been able to fortunately help out. I just, we need to make sure that. That's, okay. that's that's all good with everything, but it is something he that begins Tuesday. I'm out next week. Start with him. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it up to him. <laughs> what is, what is so we have opportunities for, 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 for discuss, like, opportunities for the business community, either through advertising or, or sponsorships over there. Um, one of the things I hesitate a little bit is we, we hit our business community on so many things, and we're also hitting them with our summer stuff. That's our big hit for the summer children's shows and the summer concerts. I like to kind of keep that with the businesses. Uh, we do have some business assistance, like when we do the swim meet every year, the LaFond Insurance and Stachy's Pizzas underwrite that yeah. whole thing, uh, which has been great. Um, you know, awards, the cookout they have there. Uh, doesn't mean we can't look at maybe some other potentials with that. Um, I'd be open to that. All right. Let, 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 me just before, let me just indicate that regardless of the decision you make, we'll continue to provide the scholarships as necessary. It's not subject to whether or not there's a deficit, Great. but we make a profit. Great. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, motion on the floor. Second. All those in favor? Uh, to keep it as is. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, going back into hearing. No, we are moving into um, public hearing. Public hearing. 
uh, for a couple of street layouts and then removal of some shade trees. Um, I need a, a motion. Motion to move into the public. Motion to move into the public, public, public hearing. hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you need a roll call on that? No, you're fine for no. public hearing. So our first is on Hitching Post Road, correct? Yes. So Hitching Post Road is up for street acceptance at this year's town meeting. Um, we've received support letters from the DPW, the Board of Health, the Conservation Commission, and Planning Board has recommended favorable action. Okay. The subdivision was built approximately 20 years ago. Um, so. Can you explain to the people that are here and at home what that means exactly? Because I did get a few calls, I think others did too, is what is this all about? So maybe it'd be helpful. About the street acceptance? Yes. So part of a subdivision, really the final step is that the developer proceeds with street acceptance. In this case, um, it's actually the town pursuing it. All requirements have been met in terms of the planning board definitive subdivision approval. Um, and so the last step in the process is street acceptance, which provides for the town to um, provide services like snow plowing and trash removal, which has been taking place on this road since development. So. <coughs> and it's another road for our Sorry. Right. right, so this is the layout here, and um, so you all received a layout plan, um, which lays the road out. The Subsequent back. to that is the street gets accepted at town meeting with a vote for the town. Do we need to take a vote? Yes. We do. Okay. Before we can proceed to the town meeting for approval as a street acceptance, a layout hearing is required. Do we vote after the hearing? Yes. Okay. Any comments? Yep. So you want resident, just resident testimony? Yes. Uh, while the hearing's open, is there any resident testimony? No. And do I have a motion to close motion the hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. For Hitchin Post Road, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Hitchin Post Road moves to town meeting. Okay. Can I have a motion to open the hearing for Stanton Way? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Stanton Way, similar to Hitching Post Road. Very similar, although more recent development. Um, Stanton Way is off of Bradford Street. It is also recommended by Board of Health, which this is a septic development, so all homes are on a septic system. All plans have been approved and certified by the Board of Health. The DPW has signed off. Conservation Commission has ordered a certificate of compliance mm -hmm. on the entire subdivision. Again, it's a street layout hearing um, to lay out the road and the planning board has recommended favorable action. Any questions? Any resident input? Can I have a motion to close the hearing? So motion to close the hearing. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Uh -huh. Move approval to accept the end of the road. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Okay. Motion to close. Oh, no, we, didn't. we already did that. Now I need a motion to open for the public shade trees for National Grid. So moved. Second? Second. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing for the shade trees at the request of National Grid to remove at the request of National Grid. Who's there? We go. How are you? Uh, my name is Matthew Detterling. I'm an ISA certified arborist with National Grid's Hazard Tree Mitigation Program. Um, I think we've been here. And We've done the selectman hearing before. Um, we basically look at um, the worst performing feeders within the state and try to boost the reliability on them. Um, so we're looking for defects, we're looking for canopy decline, try to reduce everything. At that point, we go out and uh, I believe I went out with John Lavin and we reviewed all the trees, um, to distinguish whether they were private or town. <coughs> and uh, he gave me um, some good advice on some of the trees and uh, we came up with a list. Um, that we're bringing before you here. Okay, we got an email on this today too. Yes, someone was in favor. In favor of it at their home. Yeah, I think it was on chat. Yeah, it was on chat. Yeah. Okay. So, was there much of a discrepancy be between you and John Lavin, or were there? No, uh, we seem pretty much in line. He, um, towards the end, thought that some of the trees on Osgood Street, um, down towards the DPW, the big silver maples, he thought that they would be 
better for the town if they came down. Uh, I had originally written them up as a trim, but I can definitely see where it would be beneficial to both grid and the town to have those removed because they're what they call V-outs, so they come up and go up and around the wires. Oh, yeah. So um, we're worried that the branches are going to continuously fall over the years, and they're not in the greatest shape either. And what, what that, street was that on? Uh, that was on Osgood would Street. Would that affect the power at, um, at DPW? I mean, that's really important that they... They keep power during if They the are on that feeder, so yes, that would affect, I think the school too runs out of there. Mm -hmm. okay. And you concur with that? I do, yeah. I believe it would be beneficial to both parties. Yep. I hate to see them come down unless they're diseased. Well, it says right here that you're, in each case though, that they have decay. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they're generally healthy trees. They're, they're silver maples. With silver maples, when they get decay in them, they don't really uh, react very well to it. Um, they're very brittle trees. What happens is they usually don't fall at the base. They have just drop big leaders. That's, that's all it is. So when you have a V-out situation like that, the leaders will continuously just keep falling into the wires the worse and worse they get. Makes sense. I mean, it seems like every one of them has, has an issue. It's not just... Yeah, we're not going after healthy trees. We're, we're uh, a reliability program, so we're not looking for proximity trees. We're only looking after trees that have some sort of structural defect right. or some sort of disease or pest involved. Yeah, obviously one of the beauties of this town is the trees that we have, but if they're, you know, if they're a risk, then obviously they need to be looked after. Right. Yes. One or the other, right? And we either we either let the tree sit there and take the wires down, or we'd be proactive about it. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately, exactly. unfortunately. Or worse. Yeah. are there any or programs that National Grid has to, to give us trees to replace them in other parts of town, perhaps, so we don't actually? Um, use? That I could speak with my boss. In the past, we have done that. Oh, really? Um, our program has sort of. Um, gone through a change. I'm not sure if that's still available. Usually, I think we're looking at about a thousand to three thousand dollars for replacements. I would have that's to double check on that, though. That's great. Double yeah. check on it. Good yep. call, Selectman D. Colagero. Yes. <laughs> we like trees. Yep. We don't like to take them down, but that's great. Um, any other comment from the board before I go to the audience? Resident input. Yeah? Hi, my name is Irina, and I'm living on Chadwick Street, mm -hmm. and we have uh, two trees which are marked to be either removed or trimmed, and I still don't know because... It's what's the house really? number? This is Chadwick Street, 133 Chadwick Street. 133. I don't even see that. So it would be under... What's the site ID? MD07. MD07. Item 8 on the left. So there's... They're, they're it's a removed. to be removed. So they are removed. And my question is, after they will be removed, Will the stump be left? Mm -hmm. the, the stump will be removed by the town eventually, right? Yeah, we, we don't do uh, stump grinding. Right. That I know last winter the town removed a number of stumps from the area. They go out at one time. I don't think it's the town that does them. It's a subcontractor, but they go out at one time. But this is on her private property. They no, still right? No, no, no. 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 Oh. None of these are private property. Oh, oh. So normally what we do is we issue a contract on an annual basis to a stump grinding company, as Mr. Valenford identified. Uh, will, will it be within a few days of when the treaty comes out, or even weeks? No, unless it's coincidentally happens to be that case. We'll accumulate all the stumps that need to be removed. We put out one bid, and a company comes through and does that for us. But it can be several months or longer between when that tree comes down and when the stump is removed. My other question is, please be, uh, please confirm if the, those trees can be replaced. Okay. Because when we moved in this area 16 years ago, we just had set three major sources of noise. It was highway, railroad, and airport. And now we have also fire uh, station moved to our area. And now the railroad is a big concern because train has to give at least three pumps when it crossing Sutton Street. And uh, during the past years, many trees in our areas were in our area were, were removed and were not replaced. Now we are replacing winter with three pain sashes because of noise. The noise increases dra increased dramatically. 
during the past 16 years. And if those 29 trees which are listed here are not replaced, it will be a completely different neighborhood. So they need to be replaced, and we have to see how they will be replaced. replaced. Okay. So with the replanting, with, with the replanting, um, how we did it in the past is we give the town the money. Right. We work with the DCR, and it's sort of like a right tree, right place situation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if three thousand dollars will cover 20, 29 tree removals, um, but I can tell you that some of the trees, um, I believe John Lavin had specified to me, were already on the list because of the ash trees yes. in the area. Um, usually these trees that we replace are usually in sort of like high traffic areas, stuff that people see a lot of. Um, and the DCR, I believe, will be working hand in hand if we still have that program available. I think we do. I cannot um, say that we absolutely do, but I, I do believe we still have that program still going. And I have a very specific question about one tree which is uh, on a on Chadwick Street. I will show you the picture. Uh, that is not on my property. This is uh, on my neighbor property. But this is the tree. This is the branch of the tree. You see, it's not connected to the tree. This yeah. is, uh, and this is huge limb, mm -hmm. which is literally, I don't know how it holds by the tree. It's caught up in the branches and these yeah, wires. There is a wire. Yeah, those it's, are communication this wires. This is communication wires. Yeah, so that would be Verizon. So it's not problem. It's not, it, yes, it's Verizon, but it's also people's safety. Right. We walk down the street right under that tree. Is that on your list of trees? It is not because it wouldn't be affecting our wires. And that that be that be Choice here? That would be a community address. If it's a car yeah, on the on the or yeah. the there was a backlog when we didn't have that tree trimmer. So. Is this, do you know if this property is a street tree or does it extend into the private street property? Street tree. street tree, okay. Yeah, I'll just forward this to public works. It's part of the playground almost. Yeah, I'll forward it to public works. The best way to handle it for us is to go to the public way. As long as the, 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 the tree is in the public way and not on private property. Okay. That's on public over there. Thank you. Any other public comment in regards to the shade tree? Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is it this report or has it now, now been amended in a different way? Is, is it the report you submitted or you're amending that report to include the removal of the trees that are listed at the end on Oscar? Uh, that is in the, uh, is in the uh, permit. The, in the version we have includes the removal. Yes. I wasn't sure if there was a difference. Yes. Uh, Madam Chair, I motion to I don't this right. move that the Board of Selectmen approve the request of National Grid to remove 21 public shade trees and prune 29. six. Is it 29? 29. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but. It's 21 no. removals and six trims. That's why I asked the first and, and prune six town trees along Sutton, Chad, Shut, Sutton Street, Chadwick Street, Osgood Street, and Clarendon Street as presented. Further, I'd like to ask the town manager to please pursue with National Grid any opportunities to fund replacement of said trees. And what about the immediate removal of the one that's not attached? He's already passing that along. Yeah, it doesn't need to be part of a motion. It's just something that I'll get to the work. It's been for a while. Do I have a second on? I'll second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. One last question I have for you is who would be giving me the signature as far as signing the permit? Just forward it to John Lavin. John Lavin. Make sure that he gets the proper signature. It'll end up in my office now. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to consent items. We did Stevens Pond, and we're looking for acceptance of donations from new services, the youth sports groups to the town's athletic fields and facilities. Rick is back. I'm sorry. I should have had you do that. Too. Not a problem. Thank you. Um, 
This is the annual donation that comes uh, from our youth organizations as part of the field, North End of a Fields Committee, of which I chair. Uh, these are donations that is now in our sixth year uh, from the North End of a Soccer Association, North End of a Youth Baseball, uh, the North End of a Boosters Club, and the North End of a Lacrosse Association. Um, in our six years with this donation, we'll come to almost $300,000 with maiden donations. Um, wow. The committee uh, makes recommendations on how to use that money. The town manager signs off if it's something that he feels it's appropriate. Uh, fortunately, we haven't had to go into the account a lot because of some of the field projects we've done have fallen under CPA. But it does give us a good amount of money to look forward to. Uh, our biggest project that we'll be working on over the next number of years is the, the looking at the redevelopment of the middle school project. So this gives us a nice amount of money. Uh, I'm happy Happy to announce that the uh, groups are going to continue to continue to offer this in 2016. So, um, and I think this will go on. We take it year by year, but I see this as, as a commitment from the town. We did add a few years ago to make it the new field slash facilities account, which could be used for s facilities. Uh, the town manager. Um, has used some of that money a little bit to help with the Kittredge gym, and we will continue to take a look at facilities, not just fields with this. So I'm happy tonight to uh, be representing the Fields Committee on this donation. It's fantastic. So generous. So lucky. Thanks to all, all involved in that. It's unbelievable. It's just fantastic. Madam Chair, I move the Board of Selectmen accept the donations from the Youth Sports Group for the Town's Athletic Fields and Facilities in the amount of $41,520. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And huge thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next up is Columbia Gas. Um, we're looking for permission to excavate uh, a few roads in town. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, construction specialist for Columbia Gas. You're looking to excavate Mass Ave, Putnam, Lyman, Young, Little Green. It's on my neighborhood. Chadwick, Moody, Prospect, Wentworth, Highland View, Brightwood, Ferber, all downtown. Oh no, Peachtree and Coachman. Correct. Okay. I'm busy. You are. Pud I said you're going to be busy. Yes. Already. Uh... Come on. And what's the purpose to put? New new mainline or yeah, so we're replacing the um, the current uh, gas mains and services to um, maintain and upgrade our system in all these locations. So the group streets are off of mains, and then the others are uh, to change service lines, right? Um, correct. The individuals, yeah. Have you had any resident feedback? <clears throat> um, very little. Just me. And what's the expected <laughs> duration of the work? Um, we're expecting like the end of August. November to be done to be done August November yeah somewhere That's around. kind of a <laughs> well uh, um, <laughs> August September I'm sorry okay. August September um, depending on what we find in the ground I mean we don't know what we're going to find when we open it up obviously ledge we can do so it yet. Will yeah. we have it a, may it may be October. it could be you November know. you never know will right. we have a week by week schedule that residents will know when you're going to be on their streets you'll know, <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll know. Um, why will I know. The trucks will be everywhere. <laughs> well, I know, but I want to know before. I think people would want to know before they're going to be everywhere. No, don't, don't do that next time. Yeah. Um, Just ask them. We, I, I, um, I'm in constant contact with uh, Tim Willett and letting them know where we're at. So. I don't know if this is possible, but there's some streets that would lend themselves a little bit better for when school starts um, or stops, because um, you're saying September, to be off those roads that would be a natural walking I don't know. What, what we what we typically do in um, when we're in school zones or when schools in, in session stuff like that we delay our, our start and then we short we stop sooner. Mm. Um, oh, bus bus traffic is horrendous day, for us. But you delay the start so people can get to yes. school. I yes. Yes. Okay, that's good. How, Great. Because there's a lot of walkers in this did, neighborhood. Yeah. Yes. They did William Street that many, not that many years ago, and it was it was it was pretty quick and. You would, they were definitely aware of the fact that we were right across the street from I mean, the school. I mean, you couldn't yes. get any sure. closer to the school. Yeah, exactly. So, Andrew, I guess my question then would follow on with that. If you're just going to let Mr. Willett know, do we, can we do reverse 911 calls to the neighborhood? Yeah, that would be good. On the streets from that Sure, we just need the information of when folks are going to be, you know, what the order of construction is going to be. I, I would want you to check as well with 
Public Works check with the DVW director. Sure. We've got a, a fairly, a very significant roadway project beginning in about mm -hmm. a month. Correct. That affects Green Street amongst other mm -hmm. streets. Correct. Including resurfacing. We're aware of that. You are. Okay. Yes. As long as you're aware of it, that's yeah. great. Good. How would this impact? They are a little bit of the park. The same yeah. road. No, right. Same neighborhood. That's yeah. Talking about. So, the, okay, just, just yeah. the one point so six million project. Yes. Mm -hmm. The only bad part of this is we don't get it repaved. Mm -hmm. so we have pack, patchwork arms for the next five six years now. For which one are we talking about? All of them. Yeah, for it's just trench repaving. Yeah. Yes. But that's why I want to make sure that since we're repaving portions of Green Street and other streets in that area, curb to curb, yeah. I want to make sure that the utility gets done right for mm -hmm. the paving. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Oh, you'll be repaving. Oh, you'll be repaving. Yeah. <laughs> State will be making sure. Great. If you provide me some kind of order uh, yeah. list, or at least communicate, then I'll communicate the public work. Sure. sure we we could do that. We could do that, absolutely. Yep. Great. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion? Move approval. Are there two different motions, or do we have to take them all at once? I think we can take them all at once. I believe we can take them all at once. There's no reason to right. It's up to you. We can take them either. Take them all at once. Do you want to take so. the gas mains, one and two is one, and the service lines is the other? Or do you want to just take them all at once? Rosemary made a motion for all at once, I believe. Yeah, I would prefer all at once. Do I have a second on second. that motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I said aye. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> okay, you're all set. Thank all right, you. thank you. Have a, have a great night. Thanks. Do I have a motion to move into licensing? Motion to move into licensing. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're now on licensing. Okay. Have to be here? Huh? Did you just pass licensing? We're, We're just doing licensing, licensing now. now. Oh, I thought you already passed the vote. <laughs> no, no. Okay. We just Don't worry. We'll be it. there. Just, are you on the agenda? I am. Yes. All right. Well, let's get to it then. <laughs> All right. So first on the agenda for licensing, let me just pull up my package here. Yeah. First on the agenda is the uh, St. Gregory's Church for your annual cigar night. Correct, that's the, should I get up here? You can Please come do. up and oh. tell us all about it and like you do every year. It's good to well, I'm the chairman of the men's club and the men's club does sponsor the cigar night uh, once a year uh, in June. Uh, it's a fundraiser for the church. For the past two years, we've been raffling off from Mercedes Benz. Uh, we sell uh, no more, 500 tickets total for a um, CL class Mercedes and it goes very well for us. And uh, if you vote affirmative, it won't cost you a penny. I trust, promise. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're looking for the uh, the one day full liquor license for uh, for this year as well. And that's about it. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Uh, I think um, everything is in order. The police and fire have all um, given approval. So I'll give a motion. Mr. I'll Thank second that. Oh, okay. And you're also requesting to waive. I'm sorry? Uh, you're also requesting to waive the fees. Oh, uh, correct. Right. We okay. are requesting to waive the so, fees. We're um, a nonprofit organization. Does your motion include the waiving the fees? It was gone, but yeah. Oh, Don, did you? Yeah, I'll okay. second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, you're all set, sir. Thanks Thank you, very you much. again. Have a good one. Okay. The next on the agenda is to um, renew the license of uh, Dolly Miller, psychic readings on 163 Turnpike Street. Again, I don't see any opposition from any of the town um, fire, police, or DPW. Would you like to come up and? Now, she's got to tell us how we're going to vote now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> do that every time. It's a lot of, uh, he gets a lot of mileage out of that one. <laughs> it's funny every time. <laughs> Move approval. Oh, um, did you want to? Did you want now? Just a question: Why is this one out of cycle with the other um, licensing that we do? It's based on the renewal date, as opposed to on an annual. Some of okay. Annual. So the, okay, so she's off the cycle. Okay. So do you want to give a few words about your business before we go through it? No. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All set. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay, next on the agenda 
is a new old friend, Mr. Uh, I'm gonna. I always hack up your na last name, Mr. Doug Go, Doug Paul and Alexandra, um, for a license for a star pizza and family restaurant on um, common victual license and entertainment license. So are you reopening? We're reopening. You're reopening, huh? Yes. You just can't stay out, huh? Can't you stay away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. After 40 years. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Um, okay, well, do I, um, would you like to say anything? Or no, we're, we just want your approval so we can reopen the store again. Okay, uh, do I have a motion? I'm so moved. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Welcome and back. Welcome Thank you. Back and, good, and best of luck wait. again. Right. Thank you very much. Will you be doing deliveries again too? Yeah, yeah we are. Yes, the delivery. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, next on the agenda we have a, um, a request from John, and I'm going to hack this name up, Alaphicus. Maybe you can help me. Elitherapicus. Okay. Um, for a license at 17 Mass Ave for a Class 2 automobile sales license. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Now, is this a change of license from who's already from already there? So yes. Th this new is license. The old one was revoked, and this is new, new license. Okay. All right. And you'll be taking over all his inventory. No, nope. no. I have. Well, I took over some of his inventory, but some of it's still there in the back for storage until they take it away. Okay, so you'll be cleaning all that yes, up. Yes, that'll all be cleaned up. Okay. Um, I, once again, um, I think everything is ordered with, uh, and approved by the both police, fire, the fingerprints, everything went through. There's no issues or no concerns um, from any of the town organizations. Um, so, do I have a motion? I will move approval, but I think you have residents in the audience that would like to speak to it. Okay. Can oh, I'm sorry. That? All right, why don't we have them come up? Um, and We're next door neighbors to you. This is going to be your place of business. Right next door, right at the fence. Right next door. You were here before. You were here when yeah. the original license was when granted. The orig that's why I didn't know how he's going to be. I thought they just transferred a license, you know, but it has to go through process anyway. So uh, I just want to make sure that what this fellow that was that owned it before mm -hmm. is going to be in compliance with the type of business that you're going to be running. Well, he's no longer there. No, there. I understand. So if you tell me what you want, I'll comply with what you want. Okay. But I don't really know what you want. No, I know. But this was a way of meeting you and, okay. and knowing that. Right. Jeff, well, I think yeah. the last time you had some concerns about the, the, um, the, the business being empty at the time yeah. and there were oh, a lot of terrible. transients there yeah. and there. Yeah. Now, has that improved? It has the improved. Oh, yes. Uh, I just have concerns of the number of automobiles that you're going to have on the property mm -hmm. and where they are going to be placed. I didn't get anywhere with the previous owner of removing, not removing, but moving back the automobiles, that front mass ab. They're right across the sidewalk part. There is no sidewalk. The there is a sidewalk. I walked with the kids for years. There. Well, maybe we'll agree that where the sidewalk should be. Should be. Okay. I mean, it was not. Just to help you, where the where that dirt is, I was going to plant flowers. But if oh, that's rather, wonderful. Not, that's what. I won't. <laughs> no, I that's put, great. I can make it, it so you can walk on. The it. thing was, since he put those cars there, we have runners from town, the high school, you know, runners that are. You come to the our house. They have to go out into the street now and go around the uh, property in we, front we of the cars. We can fix that. And it is so dangerous. We've got like 10 ins and outs between the gas stations, the bank, the uh, mm -hmm. off and on ramps. And we used to have a sign that said 35 miles per hour there. 
I don't think it's even there now. It's very congested in that area. Yeah. Very, very sure, it's a busy, it's, yeah. it's, a very busy, busy it's yeah. terribly busy. Especially and with going on and off one anything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. I mean, yes. sometimes we sit in the driveway and wait good five minutes to get, get out. We can't even get out. We can't even get out of the driveway. driveway. I'm really so sorry. You know, you wait there five, ten, fifteen minutes just trying to back out. Yeah. yeah. You car know, after you car after car. The police are always parked right there to watch these people go yeah. by. But they, yeah. yeah, but they can't see with those cars right. parked right on the car. You can cars back. That's what you want. That's easy. Yeah. I think it would, it would certainly help because we can't see what's coming up that right. road. And those guys, those people, mm -hmm. are coming a heck of a lot faster. faster. Than 35 miles an hour. Yeah. I'll fix that tomorrow. Yeah. Well, well, I'm yeah. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get this back <laughs> under uh, yeah. control. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for your yeah. input again. Yeah. Okay. We appreciate well, you, know, you keeping up I on this. Well, well, you know, I've, I've lived in this town for well, well, I'm, I'm 81 years yeah. old, and I've lived yeah. in this town. Yeah, with that okay. Nice oh. yeah. And I've been in that city, that area. I was brought up in that area. And it's quite a difference from <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of areas it's quite a bit right? different. But we appreciate <laughs> Yeah, we appreciate your your longevity and, and coming in and speaking to us yeah. every, every time. So thank yeah, you. And we look at who's flowers, on the list. Flowers would still be nice if you <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we let the flowers well, too. I mean there's flowers a great opportunity oh, yes. to have a very nice business there. I just don't I think and we you know, we kind of we were promised the last time that it, all these things were going to be cleaned we'll up and everything. My promises will come true. Yeah. Well, we appreciate that. I know you yeah. run other businesses, right? You have I've been in the city of Solomon for 41 years, Solomon County, same location, same address, and okay. I've never had a complaint against me. So I think I can make it North okay. I'll try. Well, I think it's a great opportunity. It's, for, yeah, it's, it's, an, a, it's a good, good spot location. for something like it's that. It's a good so. location, you know? Huh? Thank you. That's okay. good. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we you. also have a very active <laughs> merchants association in town, yeah. northernmerchants.com, if you want to get involved with that. Uh, yeah, we'll reach out to them. To help with I was thinking about that, but the fellow Thank was talking you. about the pond. Thank you. Like, you know, sponsor yeah. a few things or whatever you want. If you call me and ask me, I'll be glad to do it. Yeah, and I, yeah, I think definitely reach out. reaching out is great. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions or any other comments from, from the, uh, the crowd? Anybody else here to speak? For or against? Okay. Do we already have a motion? I don't know. We don't have a motion. Um, I, I, I will. I move to approval for. Um, second. Oh, that's going to read it. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Hold on, we didn't vote yet. Any other discussion? You may not be ready yet. Yeah. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Okay, you're all set, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck and uh, oh, the only thing look forward to seeing it all nice and cleaned up and looking good. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That yeah, you're right. The um, those big flapping flags. The, uh, but he's gonna put flowers. What do they call them? The feathers or whatever. Feathers. Yeah, we don't like. Well, them. there's well, there's uh, certain sign restrictions in town. Yeah, you sure. have to speak to about the signs or what we can do. What we don't. He just buildings. retired. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> he's still there. He's still he's there. there. Damn, for now. Go see the building. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, I think we're at um, a motion to move out of licensing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, we're out of licensing. Uh, old business, no old business, no new business. Any public comment this evening? I, I, have, I have one comment. Uh, okay, we'll take you yeah. one at a time. Please stay your name and address. Phil Leahy. Good evening, I'm Phil Leahy, 159 Woodburn Drive in Methuen. I'm president of the Merrimack Valley Prevention and Substance Abuse Project, MVP ASAP. I'm also the father of a heroin addict who has seven and a half years clean. Um, the reason I'm here tonight is our group has grown, our community group has grown. We've been in existence three years. North Andover is starting to play a very active uh, part in our community. And because of some of the members, Debbie in particular, uh, They've requested that we hold our next general membership meeting in North Andover, which I was thrilled to do. Uh, you're probably all aware, but for those who aren't, um, MVP ASAP will be having their general membership meeting this Thursday, 6.30 at the North Andover Senior Center. Um, what we want everybody to know, all the communities we work for or work with and the organizations, we like them all to keep their independence. What we're hoping is They'll use us for the uh, vast resources we have, for the support we can give them, um, to help them promote events and so forth like that. 
We're a very, very proactive community group. Uh, we have, I mean, we do have resources when it comes to treatment and contacts. Uh, we have very good resources, actually. Uh, but that's not the main focus of our community group. The main focus of our group, our main mission, I should say, is awareness, education, and prevention. Uh, because substance abuse has to be attacked from so many angles, uh, I've created five community, uh, five subcommittees, all with the intent of attacking it uh, through events, social media, legislation, youth organizations, so forth like that. So uh, it's the hope of myself and some of the members of our, my group that come from North Andover that uh, we will increase our numbers and we welcome North Andover to the MVP ASAP. Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you for all your work. I yeah, wish you continued success with your son as well. Thank you. May I ask a question, please? Yes, public comment. Um, my name is Tim Schiavone. I'm legal counsel to several of the uh, abutters in Small Life Farms, and they received the notice yeah. that there was a public hearing tonight. Right, so we're here. Hmm? We got for an alcoholic beverage. So there was an original filing by Mr. Smolak for a license. There were imperfections in the material he submitted, and he will be refiling that, as I understand it. Although as of today's date, he had not refiled that. Is it not a courtesy that I, I was let not us aware that there was a, uh, that you have yeah. a sign on the door or something that it's withdrawn? It's a fair point. I mean, I mean that's it's a, a fair, fair question. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. a fair point. It's reasonable. I didn't even know. It was it's on. a fair point. Sorry that that So as an abutter, will we get another registered yes, letter? Yes, you absolutely will. Yes. What's the process in that case? Is it the responsibility of the individual, the, the filer, to re-notify or is it? As it relates to the notification, it would have been the filer. But, it, but again, it was imperfections in the license requirements when we did a cursory review. And so we indicated instead of coming here with an imperfect license or licenses, depending on what he refiles, we indicated. Any problem, you know, from the standpoint that people have to remove them and refile them. This I just have a I, I just have a problem with a common courtesy. I appreciate that. Agree. You're right. It wasn't on our agenda at all. I didn't even know it was. I didn't, even I didn't know, know it was, it was even proposed. So. But that I mean that might be an avenue that they would check the agenda before you come out just to be sure. But you're right. It's it's our responsibility. We own that. Yep, and I apologize. Oh, I'll tell you. Got it. Okay, any other public comment this evening? Yeah, just, just, just one for the end to find out. Um, Javik Street, where Macworth Park is. Yeah. Call National Grid and ask them to check the safety of, of, of one of the poles. It's like this. Another one of those? Yes, it's, hang, it's hanging in the tree. It's on, on Chadwick Street side, right? The right, right across, side. right across from where the other sign is. It's, I, I can't see what's, what's holding that pole. Because I, I know, I predict because the fortune teller told me you're going to see me tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> so if, if you, without hurting yourself, you the pole, pole, if you could tell me what the pole number is, it's right on the face of the pole, that would really help. So before you come in, a on go yeah. read the number. I'll, I'll go read the number. If not, I'll do it. <laughs> no, don't do no, it. No, no, do it in the morning. It's all dark. But if you, if you could provide me the phone number, we'd really help. Take a picture of each one. And they may be two, so, <laughs> yeah. John, they may be two numbers. Give me whatever phone. numbers you have. All right. Okay, you can take a piece of paper and do a rubbing. Okay. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there any other? No. Town manager's report. Do we have any questions? These are the days when I miss Bill Gordon. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> the reports that I've, uh, the standard reports are filed in your packets. If you have any questions, more than happy to answer them. Next meeting date is Monday, March 20, I mean, April 25th. My goodness, the year is just flying by. That's true. Uh, well, we we got to leave early. It's early. Yeah, do I have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. We are now adjourned.